This is a Geonix EM38 Mark II electromagnetic induction instrument. In this video, I'm going to discuss the various parts of the instrument and show how we attach accessories to use this instrument in archaeological geophysical survey. I'm not going to go over how we null and zero the instrument or how electromagnetic induction works. For more information on those topics, please see our other videos and refer to the manual that we produced as part of this project. Production of this video and the associated manual were supported by a grant from the National Center for Preservation Technology and Training of the National Park Service. The EM38 Mark II is about a meter long. It has a transmitting coil here at what we think of as the front of the instrument. This is typically the direction of travel. It's got a receiving coil midway down the length of the instrument at a half meter, and it's got another receiving coil at this end of the instrument at a one meter distance from the transmitting coil. The instrument can be carried in two modes. How I'm holding it right now is called vertical mode. If I carry the instrument like this during survey, I am in horizontal mode. The names vertical and horizontal mode come from the orientation of the dipolar magnetic fields that are produced by the coils in the instrument. You can picture the coil like a roll of duct tape. When the instrument is in vertical mode, the coil is sitting as if it would be sitting flat on the ground like this, and the magnetic dipole is extending through the center of it. In horizontal mode, the coil is oriented like this, and the dipole goes horizontally. So there are three coils, transmitting coil, receiving coil, receiving coil. The control panel of the EM38 is accessed by opening this hinged cover. Here we will see several dials and a few ports. This is the mode dial. You can switch between these different settings to check your battery strength and you, you use different modes during calibration. These four dials here are used for calibrating the instrument, which I discussed in a different video. In order to move the dials, it's important to use these little black tabs to unlock and then you do here and once you get the reading where you want it you can lock it back up again. Um, this keeps them from moving accidentally but you don't want to force them to move uh, when those tabs are not unlocked. It has two connections here one at the front and one at the back for the straps for the extender arm for carrying it all day and I will show you how that goes on and it also has those same connections on the side if you should want to use it in horizontal mode. Uh, for archaeology we have never used this in horizontal mode to the best of my knowledge. We always use it in vertical mode. And this is a little spring-loaded ball there that holds it in the cradle on the pole uh, securely for when you are calibrating. The two LCD screens on the side read out the same data as the LCD screens on the top. So same thing, you've got a top and a bottom, and a top and a bottom, and they're giving you the exact same information. This instrument has three main external accessories that will allow you to use it effectively for archaeological geophysics. First is the extender arm, which straps on and allows you to carry the thing all day. Second is a data collector, which allows you to set certain survey parameters and automatically collect the data while you are surveying. Third is a rechargeable external battery pack that will allow you to run the instrument continuously for long periods of time and not be reliant on the 9-volt battery. The extender arm attaches at the instrument using these pretty simple clamps. You will thread it through thread it through the back these are adjustable because how long these straps should be depends almost completely on how tall the surveyor is. When you're carrying this thing for survey, you want to be able to lift the front over small obstacles. You want the back to be basically dragging on the ground. You don't want to have it uh, configured so that you have to lean over all day to get it to drag on the ground, and you don't want to have it so that you have to put a lot of upward pressure to keep it up because those things will fatigue you very quickly. It's to come up. So ideally when you get it adjusted correctly, you're going to want to be able to drag the back along the ground and lift the front smoothly over any obstacles. And you're going to want to do that without having your body torquing to one side. So this may still be just a tad high for me. Oh, 
under normal circumstances, you would have one person getting ready to survey and another person to help them actually adjust the instrument. So that's not bad. So that's the extender arm. The next thing you want to hook up is the external battery. The cables for the data collector and the external battery access the control panel through these openings here. So you can thread the battery through the front one, which lines up with its port. If you look at the inside of the battery cable, you will see the two pins. And if you look at the outside, you will see a small red mark. That mark lines up with a small red mark on the external battery port. It slides right in there. There's a very, very faint click. And then if I had an operator here with me, he or she would wear this over his or her shoulder, and we would tie it on, secure it here with a piece of flagging tape for strain relief. These connections are probably some of the weakest points, so you want to make sure that you are not stressing those cables. So once you get this configured the way you want it and you have your operator getting ready to go, you can securely attach the cable with a piece of flagging tape. Data collector has an RS-232 connector at one end and a serial port at the other end. At least that's how ours is. So you thread that through the hole. If you look into the end of this plug, you will see a semicircle that matches up with a semicircle on the port on the instrument. And so you line those things up. Put it into place. And you would similarly attach it for strain relief. The other end of the cable is a serial port, which attaches to the data collector. I'm going to turn the instrument on, turn the data collector on, still booting up. So with the added challenge of having a microphone on me, I would sling this over my shoulder. Normally I would carry the data collector in my left hand and run the instrument with my right hand. I would be all set to go. So this is what the instrument looks like when it's fully configured for survey. I have access to all the functions on the data collector with my thumb. I can also set the instrument down, which I will have to do uh, to manipulate various things on the screen. And we would be off and running.